So you may have heard that um, Google just announced that they're cancelling their Google Plus service, their social network that they've made to compete with Facebook. And I had a few things to say about that, so I thought I'd, I'd actually say them rather than uh, write them down. So obviously I dislike their decision. I, I, I liked using the network and I thought it was a much better service than Google or than, than Facebook or any of the others that are there. Uh, so personally I don't I don't like it. I understand from a business point of view why it didn't work for them and they're cancelling it, but I think it's a really sad change because it marks a change that Google is going through where they're, they're no longer that amazing company that is way above the rest and does things in a, in a completely different way, but they're becoming kind of an ordinary company. So they're on a trajectory from being unique and the, the moonshot company to being kind of ordinary. And uh, l let me explain first what I th mean when I say that they used to be a unique company. So unlike like your average company that has to have profits and then meet margins and, 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 and kind of work within limits, uh, Google felt like it was this kind of renaissance man that had money somehow from their estate or whatever and they they could just do amazing things without worrying, give, giving them out for free, without concern about about profits or money or, or this any of this and um, the way that that Google was able to be in that position is that they, they were actually they're not they're not just one organization it's actually three different organizations that we understand as Google and um, the first one the most obvious is the one that is the actually the tech company so there is a relatively uh, the, the company that you easily imagine is the one that has some um, some really talented and really principled uh, engineers and managers and they make things like a phone operating system or they make uh, uh, tablets or maps or, or email or whatever and they, they just give these products out for free so they essentially they create public goods they're not, they're not selling these products they're just creating them like an open source organization would for, for free and so that's the tech company that that we all lo know and, and 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 like and of course there is another company that is the advertising company it's almost completely different and it sells it sells the attention that these products generate um to advertisers and and, and gets the money in and pays the tech company that that can therefore act as a charity and of course of course you know about these two companies but these two parts of google but there is there is really a third part which is um which is us which is you and i and, and everyone else because what gives the google products value is the 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 so-called user generated content is the stuff that people upload or the stuff that you find through google so I mean, in the case of something like YouTube, it's very obvious that the user, the people upload content and it's user-generated content. And in the case of Google+, the social network, obviously it's uh, user-generated content that, 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 that matters. In that case, they didn't monetize it, but if they did, it would be the, the user content that, that, that they would be selling, not, not the software. But all the Google products are like that, even... even uh, Hello, dog. Even the less intuitive ones. So, for example, with Google Maps, you don't think of it as user-generated content, but it is because the, what the reason you care about things in Google Maps is that there are coffee shops and, and like other things and transport and, and, and services that other people made that you find in Google Maps that make it that make the content interesting. And I mean, you can get Google Maps for, for the moon or Mars, but there's nothing there, so it's not that interesting. So, Google is this really these three organizations where there is this, this tech company that, that is well known, but is actually more like an NGO, more like a charity. Then there is the money oriented advertising business, 
and really the the value generators is is the people it's us so it's it's uh it's you and i so it's uh interesting that they uh, decided they they didn't um well first they decided not to monetize the social network and then they uh they decided eventually to to cancel it i think it's going down next year they as part of the announcement they let's talk about that later so uh why why is it why do i think that cancelling the, the 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 network is a transition because you could see you can see google going through a transition that it, that, that took three um there are three events that mark this transition the first one is when the founders moved away from the company and uh, appointed a CEO. And that meant um, that meant Google was no longer the moonshot company. It was not the company that would, um, I don't know, go to space or, or make an AI or uh, do the amazing new things. It, Google was going to be like a normal company that has profits and earnings calls and, and like shareholders and stuff. And maybe Alphabet wanted to be the amazing new company but uh, we'll see about that so uh, that was the first transition I thought I thought when they appointed the uh, when they changed the, the structure and they, they produced alphabet I thought that was the beginning of the end and there was another change that was maybe not as uh, as earth-shattering when they announced that they're canceling uh, inbox which is their uh, the other version of Gmail and you know why is that a big deal it's not a big deal but it shows a kind of lack of ambition so it um if, if i make a comparison it's like um, if you remember like uh, if you're old enough to remember quite a few years ago british airways the airline they i mean they used to paint their logo on the back of the, the tail of the plane which was kind of a british flag and at some point in the 90s they decided instead of that they were going to paint art in in the back of the plane so each plane was different they each had like a different art um, uh, a piece of art on the tail and i thought that was such an audacious move because every plane was individually different and yet you could tell right away that this is british airways and they were signaling we're so strong that we can um we can do this and still be instantly recognized and and the same way inbox was which was just another way of doing email and like you wouldn't have thought that another way of doing email would 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 be there to be found but uh, you know google was trying to do that and uh, you know good for them but now they decided that they no longer want to bother so they no longer want to do that audacious innovation and try to do something different so i thought that was sad and now with the social network that they're cancelling, it's... Um, uh, we'll talk about the business decision, but in terms of the impact and the ambition of the company, it's a massive scaling down of, the, of their ambition. Um, because it means the company no longer wants to have like a a really direct relationship with with us it wants us to, to sell us products but it doesn't want us to have such an intimate relationship with the company so i can see why it makes i mean they announced the the the, the cancellation um as part of a data issue a breach but i think that's an excuse i think the in practice uh, they're stopping it because it didn't actually compete with Facebook. It didn't make any difference in, in the, the, the success of Facebook. And, uh, or, or rather, they didn't attract people from Facebook to Google. And it, they couldn't monetize it. They tried it briefly. It didn't, didn't work. People didn't like it. And so it wasn't making any money. And I mean, some people are saying, well, why don't they just keep it going? Because it doesn't cost very much. The software is already there. It cannot be costing very much. That's true. In technical, in a technical sense, it doesn't cost very much. But it's a huge headache. It's a huge liability for the company. So if you have um, a site where people can post 
you know text and movies and stuff and you are you 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 have lots of liability for the content so if someone um, if someone posts I don't know cartoons that uh, at least some Muslims don't like uh, what is that is that free speech or is that hate speech and suddenly you have to decide uh, or um, you have to deal with governments of different parts of the world so the United States government sometimes wants to uh, snoop on people because whoever resists the US government yeah, they, they want to uh, to surveil them so so Google has to um, to deal with these requests uh, other other territories the Europe has to is trying to make laws that restrict what can be said or not said about European people and I mean that's quite a I, I think that Europe's motives are better but it's a terrible precedent because if you if you ac if you accept that as a kind of censorship why don't you accept Chinese or, or, or another kind uh, so it's um, it's opening up a huge headache where all these things that people might say on your platform the platform may be liable for in some way so it's not free to maintain a platform it's a it's a big um, it's a big management uh, headache or liability or uh, yeah which if you're not if it's not part of your core business to be doing that then it's more liability than it's worth there's also more um, there's also two other um, there's also two other more ambitious more long view uh, points about having uh, this direct relationship with with humans or, or not having it so one of them is that um, you know apart from you're saying uh, if you have a, a space if you have a space that people come into and, and interact in your space that implies that invites broader questions of governance so the lazy answer to the governance question is well we have terms of service and people accept or reject the terms of service or we enforce them and then I don't know Zuckerberg or, or, or whoever decides what, what these are and, but this is a very lazy answer to the governance question it essentially means it's like being in a mall and then the mall police can throw you out if you're naughty but this is not like real governance of a public space so the if you're really if you're really really into having a public space with millions of of humans in it you're no longer a product you're more like a space and and you have to ask how is this space governed does it have laws does it have do the people are they citizens do they have do they have rights and obligations with respect to the authority that runs the service do they have rights and obligations with respect to each other and how are these decided does the authority make the rules or do the people make the rules the 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 noble view is that um, these spaces these online spaces eventually should become like quasi sovereign they should get a, a a form of political they're political entities so uh instead of google having to comply with u.s laws and european laws and chinese laws and and, and islamic laws and and whatever uh, which are threatening to to, to they're threatening to either make the platform useless or fragmented instead the their logical end is for them to claim some kind of diplomatic status and say okay this is a, a different space it's like a it's like an extraterritorial space there are there are those in international law for other reasons and and they could say they could make a claim that we need a kind of international settlement for these spaces where they are not in any particular country they 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 have a charter they have a form of governance and they have a sort of diplomatic relation with with states where the states can say yeah we accept this 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 we accept facebook or google or we don't accept them for you know because we don't like what happens there and 
that that is a very noble direction to take but i can also understand why the investors might say no we don't want that we we, we want our company back we don't want to make a public space we want to have like a service that we offer so sadly i think the Google could have gone for this um, higher positioning of virtual spaces and they didn't. They just said, oh, it's a service, it has users, it's a liability, it doesn't work in a business sense, so we're going to cancel it. And I think that was kind of sad. The other, the other kind of big um, long view uh, point is that Google is obviously becoming an AI company. So Google is developing AIs. It's probably this. This it's not that far from um, from from being from making an AI that uh, reads all your emails and, and read, reads all your social posts and sees all your photos and recognizes the people in them. And it's actually not that. It's, it's it's moving towards being these um, these minds which are in the Ian Banks uh, science fiction novels where there are these big AI brains that are in the middle of spaceships or space stations and the the mind has a, a personal relationship with all the humans that are on board and it's like it, it's like a billion humans on board the spaceship and each of them can have a conversation with the mind. Google wasn't actually that far away, so it's. It was like it was three steps away from from this this science fiction future, this kind of getting closer to the singularity, and they decided they didn't want to bother. They, they just uh, they, they scrapped the whole thing. So they, I, I was looking forward to having a, an intimate conversation with the Google Mind, and uh, maybe now it's not going to happen. So I think these changes are kind of the beginning of the end for the company. They're, they the signify that the company is no longer this this gentleman this renaissance man who has who is above money and profits and, and basic things like that and is just doing it, it used to be like google was this uh, this noble who did philosophy or poetry or or, or art for, for the common good and and now it seems that they're no longer that they're more like a company that sells devices and sells music and services and the more like a normal company and there's no longer this magic they, they just want to be like a regular company and that I guess they're trying to compete with um, less with Apple more with Amazon I think Amazon is is is, uh, yeah, is chasing them and making them panic and do these things but I I think I think it's the, the beginning of the end. Also, for this relationship to work, for, for, for you and I and other people to create the content that made Google great, Google had to be superbly ethical. They, they had, we had to trust Google to invest our efforts on it. It would be ethical in all ways of this means in all in all the meetings uh, that to to give our content to google and we had to permit google to sell our attention and honestly i think it so far it does that with in the most ethical way that it could could be done i think some people freak out and say you're you are the product so you, this, this is bad I, I don't think so i think google does a, a really fantastic job of standing between the the you know the public whose attention is selling and the advertisers who want that attention is doing that phenomenally better than a newspaper which the newspaper would would mislead you and 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 and, and, uh, and you know, have editorial give you editorial direction uh, because it has your attention and, and and google is extremely fair in what it does in in both privacy and and, 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 and politi political direction, but if they if they scale down their ambition and they become more like 
a device company and a content company and a advertising company then who cares like and, and if you make content that they then take away then why would people bother like why would people bother with youtube why would they bother with um with photos or, or, or the next thing. So I think it's the beginning of the end, uh, or at least it's the beginning of, it, it marks the transition of Google not being this inspiring super company that's beyond money and beyond beyond capitalism. And it's more like, well, it's another company. It's like Apple, it's like Amazon, it's like one of those. You treat it in the sort of arm's length way that you, you treat companies, you don't, you don't have like a special relationship with them. And that's annoying, that's sad. I, I, I don't like that they decided to do this. As I say, I, I understand in the, in the kind of short term why they did it, but I think it's a rubbish decision. So, um, yeah, it's sad. So, anyway, thank you.